One of the biggest issues in the state right now is what to do about Atlantic City's finances. The governor and the Senate president believe in an immediate state takeover. The assembly speaker and the mayor of Atlantic City are trying to stave that off for as much as two years. What's your position on that issue? So this is a complicated one, but I'm a lot closer to the speaker than I am to the governor on this one. Um, I don't see, for a number of reasons, where, show me the evidence where state takeovers have really worked in this state. Uh, I don't think the evidence exists. Secondly, it's a very undemocratic solution. You know, they just had elections in November. Folks down there are wondering, why the heck do we even bother? You know, why can't we find a way to fix Atlantic City within a democratic solutions? I don't understand that. I'm also a national board member. I'm, I'm proud to say a national board member of the NAACP. And there's a particular feeling uh, in the communities of color, particularly in the African-American community, that this, is be, that this is big footing and that seems to be constantly the case in these, in these takeovers. So I don't understand, frankly, listen, is Atlantic City's budget out of line relative to the population and the current reality? Absolutely. There's no argument about that. But the question is, how do you get that back on its, on its feet? You know, we elect people for a reason. And I don't, the state takeover piece, I'm not a fan of, I have to say. I think we can get there. We could do the pilot bill, which is the payment in lieu of taxes. There's no reason you have to take the, st the state has to take it over in order to push that forward. Um, I've spoken to the mayor. I've spoken to the prior mayor. I think there are available uh, levers that are, that are short of the state taking it over. How do you view the Christie governorship? I think the governor has failed the middle class in this state, period. I just don't think that he's had their back. I do not believe that he has been a, 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 an economic steward of the state. He talks a lot about how much the state's improved. I believe it's an accurate statement to say, Michael, that every state in the union has improved. The question isn't whether or not we're better. The question is, are we as good as we should be or can be? And I'm not, I'm an optimist, but th th these are facts. We still have not reachieved the employment in this state that we had in December of 2007. That's a fact. We still lead the nation in zombie foreclosures, homes that people just walked away from. That's a fact. And the numbers went up in 2015, not down. We have the second largest cohort of long-term unemployed uh, as, a, as a percentage of total folks who are unemployed in the nation. Those are all facts. We can be better than that. We must be better than that, and it requires leadership. What differentiates you from Steve Sweeney, Steve Fulop, Ray Lesniak, John Wisniewski, and anybody else who may enter the Democratic race? It's a long list. Um, I, I don't spend a whole lot of time thinking about them, so I think about myself. Um, I feel like I've had a, a lifetime of experiences that I can bring to bear on the current circumstances in New Jersey that are somewhat unique. I understand how economies grow. I've seen hundreds of models, some that worked, some that didn't. I've dealt with rating agencies for over 30 years. I understand how markets work. Um, I have been uh, an active participant in, our, in a whole range of nonprofits and in, in community organizations. I've served our government uh, under President Obama. I've served the party under Governor Dean when he was the chair. I, I believe if folks are, are judging this election based on leadership, who's got my back? Who can I trust? Who's gonna do the right things when the lights are out and nobody's looking? Who is the one who is the outsider, who's not a part of anybody's operation or anybody's machine, but actually has a fresh perspective um, and who, who doesn't owe anything to anybody. That's the space uh, not only do I fill, but I believe that's what this state is looking for. Who do you support for president? Hillary Clinton. Why? I'm, I'm an old, she's my former boss, number one as Secretary of State. We've known her a long time. We first met when she was First Lady of Arkansas. We've followed her throughout her career. I've worked for her. I've seen it on the inside. I know what kind of leader she is. I'll tell you, in real crisis, and we had plenty of crises in Germany, she had my back. She's the exact sort of leader we should want. I think she's probably the most qualified candidate for president in the history of our country. And by the way, I have a lot of time for Bernie Sanders. I have a lot of time for the enthusiasm that he's, he's unearthed in our party. 
Um, I, 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 this is a, we're in a blessed place as a party, as opposed to the other party, frankly, where you've got two adults who are debating issues. I line up much more closely with her than I do with him, but the, their conversations are real, and I respect that, and I'm proud to be a Democrat as a result. Bill Murphy, again, thanks very much. Thank you, Michael. Good to see you.